Hey guys, Roger here. What's going on? Today, I'm going to talk to you guys about The Richest Man in Babylon. I just finished reading this book. It's a great read, so I want to share what I learned with you, including the seven lessons to accumulate wealth. And if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. All right, so just to give you a quick background, um, I decided to read this book after listening to an interview with Robert Kiyosaki. And if you don't know who Robert Kiyosaki is, he wrote the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. It's a 100% must read. So if you're interested in buying real estate and investment properties and creating cash flow and you like this channel, you have to read that book. So I was listening to an interview with Robert Kiyosaki. Richest Man in Babylon was one of his inspirational books that he read when he was younger. So I decided to give it a go and I'm going to share with you the seven lessons to creating wealth. Before I hop into the first lesson, just to give you a quick background, Babylon was a civilization that existed four to 5,000 years ago. And at the time, there was the king who was named Sargon, and he just finished the war and came back home. And there was a lot of construction that had been done in Babylon. He built these canals. So the workers that were working on building all this new construction were now out of work. So a lot of people were out of work in Babylon and people weren't shopping as much because they didn't have as much money. So the king summoned his people to find the richest man in Babylon and ask him how to create wealth. So, so they found the richest man in Babylon whose name was Arkad. Okay, and they brought him in and they wanted Arkad to teach his lessons to a hundred teachers so that they can go in turn teach all the rest of the people in Babylon how to create wealth. Arkad comes in and lesson number one, save 10% of your money no matter what. No matter how much little money you're making or how much money you're making, 10% should always go towards savings. Okay, we're going to talk about what you do later after you save that money. But the first most important thing, 10% always goes into the savings. And in another part of the book, he mentions 20% goes towards paying off debt. So 20% pays off the debt, 10% you save. If you don't have debt, then you want to save anywhere from 10 to 30%. Lesson number two, control your expenses, okay? No matter how much or how little money you make, you have to control how much you spend so that you can save that 10%, okay? The other 90% can fulfill any of your desires that you please, but you have to control how you spend your money. So one poor man question, how can I save money? You know, how can I control my expenses? I barely have enough to live. And Arkad said, there's a hundred people here. All of them are broke and they all make different amounts of money. So it doesn't matter how much money you make. You have to learn to control your spending. Lesson number three was to make your money multiply. So lesson number one was to save your money. But at some point after one or two years, you know, the goal is not to hoard the money. The goal is to invest it so that money makes more money. Okay, so lesson number three is once you save after one, two, three years, however long that may be, you have to invest in something that's going to return and multiply your money. Even back then, they had basically like savings type accounts where money lenders would take your gold, would take a gold coin, hold it for you for five years or 10 years, and you'd come back and you get two gold coins or you'd get a gold coin and two silvers. Okay, so compounding interest, making your money grow. Lesson number four was to avoid any losses and protect your money. So what did he mean by this? The one story that stuck out to me was on how to avoid losses is Arkad, when he was young and he was broke and he first started saving this first 10%, one of the investments he made, he lost all his money. Okay, and why is that? He had saved about 10 gold coins and he gave it to his neighbor who was a stone worker. His idea, the stone worker's idea was to go to Phoenicia and buy gems, bring them back to Babylon and sell them for a profit. So the problem was there was a stonemaker going to buy gems who didn't know how to decipher a good gem and a bad gem. He ended up coming back with glass, <laughs> so lost all his money. So 
The lesson here is to know what you are investing in. Become educated and don't just invest with anyone because once you start accumulating money, people are gonna start showing up. You're gonna have cousins calling you out of the blue with investment ideas, friends, all kinds of people are gonna say, hey, I got a great idea for an investment. So you have to be really, really careful. Don't jump into the first opportunity that comes across your desk. Talk to other people, talk to prof talk to experts who know what they're doing and are gonna make sure that you don't lose your money. Lesson number five is to own the home that you live in and pay off that debt as quickly as possible. So that relates exactly to this channel of buying and investing in real estate. So the goal is to buy your home, pay it off as soon as possible, and then that, that way it lowers your monthly expenses and you don't have that extra expenditure and you don't have to worry about paying rent every single month. Lesson number five was to ensure a future income. So what does that mean? A lot of people, especially millennials, have not planned for retirement, okay? I started late myself. I didn't start uh, investing in my retirement until I was 30 years old. I wish I had put my 10% away at the age of 20 because over a 20, 30, 40, 50 year period with compounding interest, that extra 10 years, even though I started at 30, that extra 10 years makes a huge difference. And even back in those days, like I said, you can go to a money lender, give them your coins, they would hold it for a certain amount of years and you'd come back and you'd get the interest, okay? So plan for the future, plan for retirement. I know today's world, it's always about instant gratification. You wanna make your investment back quickly. You wanna, you don't wanna lose your money, but you have to save for the future. In, if you haven't done so already, open a Roth IRA. A Roth IRA allows you to invest money and it's growth tax-free. So that means you can put money in, it can go from, you can put $100 a month, $1,200 a year, and as much as that money grows, you don't pay any taxes on the growth, and you don't take any pay any taxes when you take that money out. It's a great investment product, and if you don't have one yet, you should definitely start today. Number seven is invest in your powers. Invest in your knowledge. Keep reading. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button, keep educating yourself and your and invest in yourself. Yeah. Invest in yourself by reading books, watching channels like this, and educating yourself forever. This is not something where you read this one book or that one book and then you're good. It's an ongoing thing. You always have to be learning. Times are always changing. You always gotta stay on top of things and you have to invest in yourself. And one way you can do that is you can hit the subscribe button and keep watching more of my videos where I'm gonna teach you how you can invest in real estate and increase your cash flow. Those are the seven lessons that we take away from the richest man in Babylon. You know, those stories are 4,000 years old. They still apply today. If you follow these principles, they're really timeless. You put 10% away, you invest in things you know and understand, you let it sit over time, you uh, protect against losses, you get ready for the future, right? You invest for when you're 60, 70, 80 years old. If you do those things today with compounding interest, you're gonna be in good shape, you're gonna be in good hands, you're not gonna lose your money, you're gonna make good investments, but it all starts with putting that 10% aside. So this video was a little bit different I did a, you know, my first book review. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a comment and tell me if you did. And if you have any books about investing, real estate, or any kind of like self-improvement books that you guys wanna um, talk about or you know you wanna share, please leave them in the comments below. I'd like to add to my you know queue of books that I'm planning on reading. And um, that's about it. So stay safe out there. Hope you guys are doing well, and I'll see you guys next time.